knows how to make his vows and so forth. That ain't what God chooses. A prophet thought that one day. He's going to anoint a servant. He said, he's the biggest of the family. He'll look right. But God refused him. Yeah. You don't have to have princes and, and so forth to stand up there like I don't know what. It ain't the clothes you wear or the eloquence you speak with. It's the something that's inside of you. That's the yeah, voice of God. Help us, Lord. That's what it is. The prophet passed by another and said, that's not him. God's refused him. Passed and said, haven't you got another? Said, we got a little ruddy one back here on the hillside herding the sheep. This is David. When they brought this little red-headed, freckle-faced guy across there and his little stooped in shoulders of sheepskin and wrapped around him. God said, that's him. <laughs> All your big statues and stuff, shirts didn't go with God. You might be DDD, PhD, or double LD. You might be Bishop Pope or whatever. You might be, but it takes God to make something out of nothing. Amen. As long as you can be the nothing, God's the something. As long as you can get yourself out of the way, then God can come in. But when you're so stuffed up and starchy, you got the biggest and the best, you haven't got nothing that you ought to have. That's a humble heart before God. We know that, brethren. Hallelujah. Certainly. Sure, you know, these see you hear the sun rise. You never really hear that. Did you ever go out at night to hear the dew fall? What would we do without it? See, it don't take that. I'll tell you one thing now. It's the still, it isn't the rippling waters that makes such a big noise and jumps up and down that reflects the beauty of the stars in it. It's a small pool that's deep and still that reflects the beauty of the stars. What we need tonight is that deep, rich experience. That's something down in us that it don't have to shout, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on our shouting. It might never speak with tongues, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on that. It might not attend Billy Graham's meeting or Robert's meeting or my meeting. You don't have to. Uh, what it has to have is that depths of God's eternal love. Amen. That spirit on the inside of him that makes you what you are. That's what I was speaking about this morning. That's what I was pulling the church across Calvary back and forth. Don't you think because that you spoke with tongues or that you know so much about the scriptures or you read somebody's books and you know more than the other fella? He said, put a mark on those that sigh and cry for the abominations that sit in the city. No. Who would he mark in our cities tonight? See, it's the depths of the Spirit, not the shallowness. It's not the shell on the, on the hickory nut that's good. It's the hickory nut under the shell. You've got a big empty shell. You've got nothing under there. What we need tonight is the depths of God's love. And when Elijah heard that still, small voice, nothing bothered him. What have you heard in all of it? You'll be going in a few days, you heard Billy Graham. you hear Earl Roberts. you hear others. Great man. Nothing against those men. They're God's servants. But don't listen to the noise. Hear that still, small voice. That depth of something that comes into the human heart that takes all foolishness away from you. It takes all the world away from you. It makes you hate the things of the world and love the things of God. That's the depths. That's the pool that reflects the stars of God's eternal glory. That's the thing that brings forth tears to the eyes. Brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. It makes you stand when all other things will fail you. It makes it. When the sickness comes or even death itself, it's still got the reflection of God's blessings in it. That little pool that's deep and reflects the heavens, not the ripple and noise of the water. Rippling waters are not very deep. It's still waters that runs deep. May God help us tonight, friends, to remember that. 